Oh, daddy. That's how I know it's working. Now I can see the wonderful moustache. How are you? I'm excellent, thank you. Good. Healed by the very outdoors. Refreshed. Oh, yes. That was the best, best little creative retreat I've done in five years. Like I said, I think you just need to do it more often. Do I do? It occurred to me last. Like I, I worked from the shack yesterday. Did a day of working from home, and it was like the best work day I've had for ages. I was just like so focused and on point. It felt like I was reflecting afterwards. I was like, oh yeah, I probably haven't had that much uninterrupted sleep since our daughter was born four and a half years ago. <laughs> it's like, no wonder I feel so good. And like, kind of no responsibilities too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was a dream. Yeah, that's Five stars would recommend. It was very entertaining on the outside. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. How are you? Good. I... Uh, yeah. Did a little work this weekend, but mostly not. I was visiting some family, so that was nice. And we came home to it being sweltering, so it was very, very warm. And so it's just been a little toasty. Today's been a lights off in the shop, keeping things as cool as possible kind of day. Oh, really? Which is do you do that? Are interesting. Yeah, I. Wow. It's probably more men. It's probably more of a mental thing than anything. But Ricky and I don't really mind, and it feels like it. It feels like it's cooler, maybe. I'm sure it is, just functionally by the number of lights we yeah. have producing heat. And that LEDs. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There's forty some at least. So. Yeah, I would. Um, it would definitely contribute, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's been good. What did, what did you come up with while you were out in the brush? Oh, man, I went on such an AI bender. I just... <laughs> no. <laughs> so much time to act, so much time to myself to just blow on all the little things I'm interested in at the moment. So I spent a lot of time in GPT and mid-journey doing... You know, sometimes doing useful stuff like business development thinking and like productive work, but a lot of time also yeah. just kind of ex exploring better ways to use it and to get more out of it and watching YouTube videos on how to use Mid Journey better and, and then experimenting and, you know, just kind of just that sort of playful experimental sort of space, which was delightful. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I did, did do a lot of sort of business development reflection, which was awesome. I've got huge amount of notes and just yeah came away with a bit more focus and clarity and what we're doing and how we're doing it and so yeah feel feeling good reinvigorated yeah i bet it, it, i could tell you yeah just from messaging you or you, you sent me uh a couple links while you were definitely camping and I think, you, well, you started out camping, right? And then it quickly turned to something else. So you, you had sent me, you sent me a, this, was it the GPT for all? Was that the one that yeah. you were down? You were like, this is, this is really interesting. And you're like, if only I had some download speed, because you're trying to download, like it's a free to use locally of running privacy aware chatbot. You don't need a GPU or internet required. Well. Ironically, you do need the GP or the internet required to download the models, which are like the kind of back end knowledge behind kind of having this local GPT client on your desktop for Windows, OS X, Ubuntu, it looks like. And I I think I got it. I was like in the middle of something, I was like, oh, gonna download that. And I like had perfect, you know, fine bandwidth. And I was like, we'll come back to this later. And we were messaging about it. And you're like, I don't know. I can't try it. I don't have any bandwidth. <laughs> I was trying to, like, the first sort of 24 hours I was camping, I was, like, trying to download it at what was pretty much dial-up speed. And it's like a 8 gigabyte file. 
So I got <laughs> frustrated and ended up going to work, downloaded it in five minutes. Yeah, I was, I was pretty, I was excited to find that, but I was a bit, uh, not disappointed, but sort of underwhelmed by how well that worked. Um, did you, how did you find it? I just found it, like <laughs> having come off the back of GPT-4 GPT a lot, I was just like, oh, this just feels really clunky and a bit dumb. Is it because of the user interface? No, just its responses. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't try. I, I was more really into the idea that it could record and actually memorize stuff. So that's all I've done yes. so far is like, oh, let's teach it something and see if it comes. You know, if I open another thread, is it actually going to be there? Is it going to know about that thing? And <clears throat> so far, it does seem that that's true, okay, which is cool. interesting. Switch I haven't switched pleasing. models yet. Using so know, sneezy or groovy? I guess I'm using it on this computer, MPT-7B chat. Okay, cool. So I don't know. I think I downloaded three versions on this computer and in my office and I, yeah, I don't know. Cool. I don't know. They, they have different versions of it. So it, yeah, yeah. it's not as pretty. Like you can tell that the styling is not developed as well, but like it doesn't seem that taxing on your computer. So I don't understand. It's like kind of mind blowing. That's like just working. Like I, I, I thought over the weekend after you sent this, I was literally going like, oh my God. So last week we were like, what if we could have a, a local version that learned? <laughs> and like not even a week later, we had that and he, and you were trying to run it in a campsite. You know, like <laughs> it was so fast. And I think we're getting like, just from the, this conversation alone, we're getting like used to this like instant development of like what we want is now available. And like I wasn't even as, as excited as I would have been probably I two know. months ago, you know, kind of like yeah. oh, that's crazy thing. Yeah, it's all moving so fast. It's wild. Yeah, I just installed Anthropic into my Slack channel. Anthropic's like I saw uh, that. Hey, I think people who left OpenAI for ethical reasons started their own company oh. under the sort of the tagline of like safe, safe AI. <laughs> and apparently the, I don't have access to the, like the proper Anthropic API or model. I've just got it in my Slack channel at the moment, but apparently like, oh, the proper, see, version, yeah, yeah. proper version of it has just eclipsed GPT-4 in terms of token input and output, like you can dump way, way more data into it and get way more out in a single Holy prompt. Wow, so, that's interesting. Anyway, well, your video just disappeared. Yeah, I see that. Maybe we just have to go without it. Carry on. I see you're taking some tasty little flat lay photographs. Yeah, this morning. I ah. have not done a photo shoot in what seems like years. And yeah. So that's been kind of interesting. I did that today. When this comes out, we should have a whole slew of new products because we're starting to sell some of a couple different brands, CNC tools and accessories, not necessarily like cutting mm. tools, but like tool holders and collets and stuff that people had started to ask us about because we had sold tool holders and some of that stuff just starts to go really hand in hand. And it, it's, it feels like a good way for us to grow. The way I kind of see it is we have unique product that are solving some problems like the dust boot, like pedestals, like those kind of things. And then there's also just staple products that need to be there. And some of them are hard to find or hard to know who to trust. So that's kind of where I'm mm. trying to fill in some more things. And, and yeah, so tomorrow we should have a whole bunch of new stuff sick they're really pleasing images and it's just like <laughs> you know there's there it's so it's nice to see that sort of hardware sort of presented so carefully and nicely <laughs> with a design eye like yeah. you're used to sort of seeing this sort of stuff on such crappy websites yes and it's yeah it's a, it's a nice point of difference i think yeah I, yeah thanks that's I, I didn't know how far I was going to go into it with trying to set up, you know, photos. But the company that we're going to probably have the most from right away here is Technics, 
We've always used their tool or their ER collets. I really like them. They have an enormous yeah. reseller database of products that you can buy and sell. And, and I think a lot of this, like you said, a lot of it is pretty poor in terms of like they have a, an image repository and some of it's okay, but most of them are like the sub 70 pixel quality like just terrible small images yeah. or they're like a duplicate <laughs> or like there's just no photo of it so to me that's definitely something that yeah. you know i actually know how to do pretty well yeah i think it's great moving forward like the people who are going to be shopping for tools it's great to have that much more visual yeah presentation like there's a company here who we buy a bit of cnc tooling from panel tools .au, I think they're called, and they it's run by this guy who looks like he's about 22, and like <laughs> it's evident in their like website and social media and stuff that they know what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> like in just in terms of how they present information, sure. like beautiful photos yeah. and good content, good video. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's very different to like the tool suppliers of old, where it's just like a catalog of code numbers, and you have to try and work out what. A, B, C means in terms of the d different dimensions and yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, cool. I, some of that data is hard to like. Like my goal is to get it all in there, so it's it's really easy to shop for things. But it is really hard. Like yeah. I've been working on Shopify trying to get filtering capabilities because it's like, all right, you want an ER32 cullet, but you know, do you want a certain size? Or like currently, we're just going to do sets mm. of them. But it's like, do you want a 32 cullet? Do you want a wrench? Do you want a it's like if you just search ER32, you're going to get a lot of crap, hopefully, you know, like a lot of things, but you got to be able to get to yeah, what you really want. Yeah. And I found a couple little things that if I can do kind of like out of the box, but some minor tweaks. But yeah, it's, it's interesting so far. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Yeah. That's fun. Nice to see the, the product range sort of growing. Yeah, it's definitely like around around your core things yeah it's great as soon as we started selling tool holders people started asking about collets and i was like hmm interesting yeah. <laughs> gotta get that figured out i think so that's kind of the mm. like we've been a proponent of torque wrenches and stuff like that so it's stuff like that that you can improve your setups tool setting up and make it a little more reliable yeah awesome I think also, I think we're bearing the lead here. I want to I want to know more about Toga <laughs> Parts, the new product line. <laughs> oh dear. Yes, my CNC machining of some branches <laughs> from the bush. <laughs> no, nah, that was fun. That was fun. That was one of those things where these things usually only ever exist as voice memos on my phone and like. I'm aware that I dump all these like really random ideas that I have mm -hmm. into voice memos and I do try to go back and listen to them all and then pull pull out the good bits into action items but yeah. in the normal normal day to day like these these ideas get lost and like there's a certain energy that is present when I come up with those these ideas which is then you know very hard to recreate later like I feel like I have like these really harebrained ideas for like reels and content and things to make and then I'm just like oh, I can't do anything with that now I'll dump it into a voice memo and then like they inevitably most of them get lost anyway so it was just really nice to be in a context where I had the sort of headspace and the time to just be like I did I did the normal thing I was like I put it in a voice memo I was like oh that's an interesting idea and then I was sitting around the campfire having a coffee and I was just like oh fuck it let's go <laughs> <laughs> it was I mean it was so I grabbed the chainsaw and jumped in the van drove to work and just like did it and yeah execute in the moment it's it really good it good really yeah if I was on your team I'd be pushing you to do this more because mm. because it was well done even if it's not selling your actual product it is as other people commented it's entertaining and something you want to see from 
like nobody I've said this before nobody wants to follow like boring companies on the internet they want to follow somebody that's like mm. not entertaining them but just like has a personality has a has a voice and so yeah I enjoyed it yeah yeah, no, cheers. No, I had a really, like, good feedback, obviously in co- direct comments, but also just in DMs of people sort of just reaching out and saying, hey, this, like, are really enjoying this little series of stuff. So, yeah, it was encouraging to get that feedback and, yeah, try and work out, I suppose, now how to make more space to sort of capture that madness and... <laughs> <laughs> execute on it in the moment you have expectations where possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah no it's good times yeah. but seriously though that like part of that like why I was playing mucking around with that is because I'm I'm thinking about buying a, a Dow uh-huh. making machine and getting some good connections set up with reclaimed and recycled timber supplies so that we can start to diversify our solid timber stock rather than always just buying virgin Mm -hmm. timber start getting you know timber out of building sites and making our dowels out of that which would be cool and just like that was part of my thinking over the weekend. I did a lot of sort of stuff on our direction and like wanting to get closer to like circular economy and like using less virgin materials. Definitely. So yeah, kind of exploring all of that and this, the twig, twig of arts was just a, a little tangent to that idea of like, you know, because we live on 80 acres and most of it's bush and like we, there's just, there's so much timber there and I don't want to like, you know, it's good for the wildlife to leave dead branches on the mm-hmm. ground and things like that. But we have such excess that, you know, we could actually, or we're a small company, we could actually do quite a lot potentially with what we already have Just sitting like, there. So, yeah, interesting yeah. ideas to explore. No, that'd be, that'd be really cool to, like, find some way to, like, I mean, it probably wouldn't be an enormous amount in the scheme of things, but it would be significant compared to not using it. And like, you know, if you're trying to focus on using, you know, making, making dowel out of material that comes out of like torn down buildings, like that, that's, Mm. it may be hard, but like you could also find, like we have companies here that, that kind of specialize in that kind of like, reuse and finding mm. you know output for those kind of things so that they're not just garbaged yeah yeah no we do too and the guy like one of these com- companies who this i'll put the link in the show notes but he's this like real sort of activist dude and he's pushing really hard for a big like pushing for change in the building industry in terms of material use and using more reclaimed material anyway we chat a little bit on instagram and it was just hilarious timing he messaged me we've been starting to sort of see the idea of like cool can we get reclaimed material from you to make our towel and things from anyway he messaged me the day i shot that <laughs> twigger parts video he was like have you ever put branches through your cnc machine i was like dude <laughs> <laughs> hold on uh, have you been stalking me i just did this Oh boy, that was pretty funny. That's funny. I mean, one of the things that became there's a company. I don't know many of these actually. It's kind of like glue lamb in a certain sense, glue, laminated timber, right? But I can mm. totally see. Which in, in the case of your like kit of parts dowels, you wouldn't need significant sized members, but all you need is some type of you know system. Like if this other person, other company can provide you with glued up dowel size stock that you can then make into dowel like i think they'd be really quite probably beautiful it would definitely be a different kind of look but you could get into some interesting stuff with how you like laminated the wood together such that it shows in a unique way when you reveal it as a dowel Mm, totally yeah i think there's heaps of opportunities to do interesting stuff there yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's always a challenge, I think, you know, because reclaimed timber is typically more expensive because of the labor element. So there's, you know, challenges there to succumb or sort of get over. But you could make you could make that part yeah, of I'm excited. Part, I mean, it's already really part cool. of your brain. And it's you could try it anyway. I don't know if there's any precedent on this where you like are charging a premium for reusing material. Yeah. I mean, not like extreme, mm. but like, you know, what it takes. Yeah, and that's part of the education piece of like why these materials may end up costing us more, but it's better to be using yeah. them. So. Yeah. Yeah. How's the how's the shipping of we got pretty well going and all of that? Have you kind of wrapped that project close up for to now? finishing up? We are there's cool. one version of it that the bases are different, and I am finishing machining those because they took a little bit more there's a lot, you know always another last minute thought revision on how they should work and more as I went to go you know turn them into a production part rather than a prototype I was like oh that doesn't quite work quite how I thought it would you know like I think mm. we just have one set of parts left that I mean in reality we really changed every part as of like January from <laughs> prototyping to everything's been redone like same same kind of parts but like yeah wow well. you know we we optimized some stuff to like use dowels differently so that the installation process would go smoother so it's it's close and we've had a you know we're definitely rounding the bend towards it being done i guess as in the the original mm, orders that is okay yeah 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 and have you had to do much sort of install um, support stuff yet? No. I guess the other part of that is I'm, I mean, honestly, some of it was a fusion challenge of I am making installation files, operations that can run on their cool. their router. And, you know, there's two different operations where you're inserting a tool and it's right. doing its thing. And I think I chatted about that with you a couple of weeks ago where we kind of realized after one of the testers went to install theirs that it was like, oh, wait a second, we need to like rethink this because we were going off of an origin and instead we're just making it a local kind of install. So you set it according to your table. Hi. And so I'm currently trying to find good ways to make fusion files that are a good process, right? Like so that it's not 15 different mm. fusion files that don't relate. And yeah, we really yeah. need a new feature that's hopefully going to come out someday in Fusion, like a, a way that we can quickly change between sets of parameters would be really ideal. And it's been uh, talked to. Yeah, like, like a sort of configuration yep, yep. manager like yes. Inventor has. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. I've seen that used in Inventor. It looks That would awesome. kind of solve my problem, but for now I'm just kind Pretty of... Rad iterating and saving the parameters which i don't love because it feels really sketchy to like come back and like have you know revisions of something if something doesn't work it's kind of like yeah that's been a challenge to kind of figure out that last mm. bit and it's not just the physical parts it's like the how does it work and hopefully it goes smooth for most people yeah and i think some people obviously just need the time to like fit it into their schedule we can't tear apart our cnc this week because we are of course yeah, yeah it's not going to be an instant a yeah. Lag, so. yeah a lot of interest in it still though yeah, it's, cool. it's it's since we've started shipping i've seen people start to Great. reach out and say hey we're interested in this when can we get it in See. seeing people want kind of a whole set of things at once which is kind of always the dream of like you want a dust boot and pedestals and the you know some tool, you know, all these different things at once has kind of always been what we've been yeah, hoping for. Yeah. The ecosystem. Yeah, yeah sick. That's awesome. Nice, man. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, I think, I think anything else? I, I yeah. probably need to jump yeah. ship in five minutes, but uh, yeah. Just uh -huh. a quickie today. Yeah, no, I'm good. Either I want to catch up on the future. Maybe you think about this cool. one. Do you... I've been thinking about and wanting to do this forever to have like 
I don't even know the right words, but I think about it as like, what is the life cycle of our products that we're making? Like, do we have suggestions on how people recycle things? How do you reuse it? Can you tear apart your, par your parts? Do we take stuff back from people so we can recycle it properly? And just kind of trying to turn that into something that's like a more yeah. intentional, like we always try to make things like that, but it's like, do people know that? How do they, how do they deal with it? Mm. Do they care? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, if you've been reading my <laughs> journal, I think I did a bunch of thinking on that on the weekends. And yeah, that's right. I was triggered by that post by. I Eric think that may have done it for week, me too. Yeah, which when I'll you link. Post, reposted it, yeah, I saw yeah, it again. Yeah, that's what started. I it saw for him, me. and then I saw you um, repost it. I was like, oh man, getting this a lot lately. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, that's right. I that was a really good post, and there was a great discussion on it. And so I, I took the post and all the comments of it and fed it into <laughs> GPT four. I was like. Let's explore these ideas, and had a had a really good chat with <laughs> with the robots about that. Actually, I need to go back and look at that conversation because it was really interesting. Yeah, and that sort of got me thinking about all of that. And like, re in reality, what can we actually do to close that product loop when you're making big pieces of furniture or anything? But you know, for us, it's the challenge of like these quite big things with a lot of material in them. Yeah. yeah. How does that work? So, yeah, big, yeah, big topic sure. for another time, but yeah, good sure. thing to explore. Cool. Glad you're back. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, getting toasty in here. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe you're hot. It's getting cold over here. <laughs> funny that. Hmm. Funny, funny how that all works. Cool. Yep. See you next week. All right. Have a good... What are we up to? Yeah, have a good week, and I'll see you in a few days <laughs> for the next recording. <laughs> Short week. Short week. See ya. <laughs> Go away. Bye. Chat soon. Bye. I'm...